Following the recent revelation that OVH, a subsidiary of Owando that NNPC previously acquired in late 2022, now somehow miraculously owns NNPC Retail, owning up to 49% of NNPC Retail. There's another revelation by Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project, a global network of investigative journalists. They reported that they have taken the Coastal Highway Project to court because of the conflict of interest and the fact that it was awarded to Tinubu's ally. Both their sons have a relationship they own an offshore company and the project was awarded to the Shagoris without a competitive bidding. Now, the former vice president has reacted to these revelations, accusing Tinubu of turning Nigeria to his personal estate. In a statement he released to newsmen through his media aide, Paul Ibe, he said, quote, Just as Alpha Beta, Primero and others act as Tinubu's proxies in Lagos, managing critical sectors and generating revenue for him and his family, he has begun to replicate this at the federal level. In October 2022, just five months before the elections, the NMPC Retail controversially announced it has acquired OVH and all its filling stations. NMPCL already had about 550 filling stations across the country, but it claimed it was enhancing its capacity by acquiring OVH, which had only 94 stations and 100 others leased. The NMPC did not disclose the purchase price of OVH or the terms of the acquisition. A freedom of information request by Premium Times was also rejected by the NMPC, which claimed to be a private company despite still being government-owned. Following this dubious deal, Mele Kiari was controversially retained as NMPC GMD, despite his incompetence. Tinubu then appointed his former boss at Mobile, turned ally Pius Akinyerule as NMPC chairman, while he himself took on the role of Minister of Petroleum. In a move that defies economic logic, OVH, previously owned by NMPC Retail, has now acquired NMPC Retail. This absurd situation means that Wale Tinubu's Owando now owns 49% of NMPC retail. Moreover, Nigeria paid Wale Tinubu a significant sum to facilitate the Tinubu family's acquisition of the National Oil Company. On the coastal highway, Atikwa Waka said, quote, I had earlier claimed that the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway project was fraudulent but the government denied it. Now the matter is in court. It is also concerning that Shagori and Tinubu have a business relationship and their children are business partners, as revealed by the OCCRP. This indicates a conflict of interest. It is no surprise that the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway and the Sokoto Badagre Coastal Highway, which together will cost over $24 billion, were approved without competitive bidding. It seems that whatever Tinubu wants, he gets." Unquote. Nigeria has never had it this bad in terms of governance, even under the military regimes of the past. The worst military regime Nigeria ever had was the IBB regime. Even at that time, he knew how to pretend. He didn't make the corruption very open and clear. He found ways to pretend and make it look as if they were not corrupt. But Nigerians knew, the only difference is that they weren't throwing it at our faces, like awarding a contract to your own company, a company that you have interest, a company that your friend owns, and both families have a business partnership. The IBB regime never went this far, but under the current administration, they make it very clear to you that you will do nothing. In fact, they will brag about it to your face and even threaten you that you will do nothing or they will do something to you if you talk about it. So that is how bad it is today. How can one man award a contract to himself, contract that is worth $24 billion, without competitive bidding, without due process as Nigerian law requires? This is sheer dictatorship. The worst part is that Nigerians have become helpless. They don't know where to go. They don't know where to start. 
This is where Atiku Abubakar and other opposition leaders must unite as a matter of urgency. Since they know that Tinubu is afraid of protests, that's going by the way they clamped down on the previous protests, the way they arrested many people. More than 1,000 people today still remain in detention across Nigeria just because they trooped out to participate in a protest, just telling the government to end bad governance. They found themselves in prison today. The opposition must unite. Atiku Abaka must drop whatever he's doing to unite and rally around the opposition to lead a massive protest across this country to demand a change. If they don't do this, this man will continue having his way and nobody will do anything about it. During their time when they were in opposition, Buhari led a protest, Tinubu also led a protest. They bankrolled the Occupy Nigeria protest that occupied many Nigerian cities for several days. The opposition of today can do the same thing. Since he's afraid of protests, let's see how many policemen will troop out and stop Nigerians demanding for good governance. This has to stop. All major opposition figures, including P2B and all other party leaders, they should rally around now. Politicians talking about 2027. 2027 is still far. These people will damage Nigeria beyond repair by 2027. They need to start by now demanding good governance because if Nigerians don't, the way Tinubu is going, he might stay in office even beyond 2031. Yes, it's very possible. He has captured the National Assembly. Both the Senate President and the Speaker of the House of Reps have all publicly pledged their loyalty to him. They can amend the constitution without Nigerians doing anything about it. They can enact any law and Tinubu will quickly sign it. He can extend his tenure. This is because all that they have been doing, Nigerians haven't been reacting to them which is a motivation to them because when they do something that they expect a serious backlash from the people and nothing comes out of it, no one is bothered, everyone is still minding their business, they will be motivated to do worse tomorrow. They will say, ah, Nigerians don't react to anything, highest they will just go to social media and discuss it for one or two days, that will be the end. Even if they troop out to protest, once they are intimidated, they will just back off and never come out again to protest. That was exactly his own strategy in 2012 when they embarked on occupying Nigeria protests. They wanted to cripple the economy. They wanted to force the hand of the government. And eventually, good luck Jonathan yielded to their demands. He reduced the petrol pump price he had already increased. So if the opposition fails to lock down this country for several days, Tinubu will never be moved. He will never yield to demands of Nigerians. Like the saying goes, Power concedes nothing except you demand for it. If you don't demand for it, they will continue. They will say, ah, these guys are not even bothered. They are satisfied. Let's continue with what we are doing. Look at what is happening between the police and the NLC president. They invited him to come for questioning. After invading the NLC headquarters, saying that they suspect that he is sponsoring terrorism. Can you imagine? And the issue of uh, terrorism sponsoring, they are trying to bring in. We don't need to consult anything before we know that they are only trying to use the police to which out the entire Nigeria Labour Congress in the Federation, not only Ajoro. It is the decision of the neck. Ajoro is using other members of the union to implement. The issue of terrorism is not there at all. Police just want to use that to intimidate Nigeria Labour Congress. And we have we are resolute to take it up with the federal government or rather the police. If they want to kill us, then they continue. The remaining one will continue to fight the cause. Because the reason is this. Since I Joro came on board, we have gone on strike for about two times. And everybody saw the reason. Since I don't come on board, we are going on protest about two, three times, and everybody saw the reason. And that reason is manifesting on the citizen of Nigeria. Today, everybody is seeing it. The Nigeria Labour Congress saw this hardship coming. That is why we are saying no. 
Bring down the hierarchy in fuel. Bring down the hierarchy the, the uh, electricity tariff. But they didn't listen to it. This wouldn't have happened if the NLC hadn't compromised during the minimum wage negotiations with the government. Even during the nationwide hunger protests, they dissociated themselves. They didn't help out Nigerians. They never in any way associated themselves with the protest. As if everyone is not feeling the hardship in Nigeria. Everyone goes to the same market. The inflation affects everyone. At a time during the protest, the government was telling them to call off the protest. They only said that they cannot call off what they didn't start, that they were not part of it. So look at what is happening now. It is time for every Nigerian to rise and defend the country and demand good governance. If you don't do it, every day, every minute, things continue to get worse. Thanks for watching.